And welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org consequence and the consequence podcast network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I am so excited to have them back from the other side of the world right now. Mr. Neil Finn. Hello, sir. Hello, Kyle. How are you? I'm great. It's great to see you again. It's great to be talking about Crowded House once again, which Excellent. is beautifully, beautifully exciting and fun and dreamy new record called Gravity uh, Gravity Stairs. Thank you. Um, congrats. I'll, I'll, let me start with that. Congrats on another fantastic record. That's an easy place. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, we you know we. It's always lovely to have it out and have people listening to it. We work on it um, in obsessive ways over periods of time. So yeah, it's really good to have it out there. Yeah. So this is, I mean, so this is second album post reunion or whatever you want to call however the timeline works these days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's second album with this same lineup, especially. Do you find that you're, is it kind of like a picking up where you left off uh, at this moment? Yeah. It Well, whenever, whatever you go into a new record record period, it's just a matter of what demos I've got um, going. And uh, there is, there, there was a, a bunch of really um, interesting new demos for this record, and they suggest the direction of the of the record. And every time, it's sort of good to have the feeling that you're developing from the last one. Um, but certainly, making some gains with the lineup that we have, um, you know, which through doing a whole lot of shows, has become really, uh, really developed with Mitchell and um, Elroy and Liam added to the lineup. It's got developing its own character, so it's exciting to see that develop. Um, you know, and even songs being put forward now by Liam and Alroy that have sort of bringing new dimensions to Crowded House. Yeah. What is that, you know, there's a little, there's a little something you said in there, like, how much do you even consider, if at all, if you need to, like the legacy of Crowded House and, and whatever sounds were in the past when you're making something new, do, do you serve that at all? Uh, well, it's something to measure yourself against. Um, I don't dwell on uh you know the old records that much uh in fact after i finish a record i seldom listen to it um, we play it live a lot so the songs become fluid uh things uh, uh and and on stage you know you expect them in a way to outgrow the record a little bit um and, and some of the old songs have done that as well now i think of them more as live songs than i do of songs on records hmm. um they seem to have kept their um their luster for me, by and large, almost all the songs that people love the most, I still really enjoy playing, and I feel very blessed for that. Yeah, you know, wow. lucky. Some incredible classics in there, but that's the thing. It's like I, 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 I really have loved what you've done every step of the way. You know, when I think when I think of you know, try whistling this and center and all that stuff in the middle period and Seven Worlds Collide, and then you know when all this rebirth stuff started happening, and it's just exciting every time to see where these sounds land uh for me or you know like i i did hit like this record feels like it even has a little bit of a dreamy quality which has sort of been there off and on through your career but it's it's its own thing right now at least that's the way i hear it do you feel like you've you understand where the sound has settled on this album yet um yeah I, yeah I can see what you mean by the dream it's sort of uh it it's got a um a dreamy sort of psychedelic quality to it which comes in, in large because I think all of the players uh, certainly my son Liam and Mitchell have got um it, they've got a, a, an approach that where textural textures are important as melodies are as important as chords and so we try and make a sound that is the sum total of our personalities uh every time and for me um, I think I'm a pretty open to um, the input of all of those people in the band. Um, I look forward to hearing what they're going to do with my demo. Sometimes they're not what I expected. And there's a, an odd occasion where I'll insist on something that seems essential that I've done on the demo to be copied. But generally speaking, I love to see them um, expand and, and develop character and atmosphere. And I think this band, you know, Liam's very attracted to... Um, putting putting textural elements in as a guitar player. Um, and, and Mitchell's always been good at that as well. So I think, yeah, that's the side of the band we we do enjoy to set the words and the vocals amongst a sort of a bit of, um, you know, warm and dreamy sounds is something I'm attracted to, no doubt. Yeah. There, 
okay so night song which ends the record when you talk yeah. about demos like when i heard that song that's one of those moments i'm like what does a demo to this even sound like because this you know there's there's movements there's pieces you know and it's it's so trippy almost well it it, it, it actually sounded pretty much like the record the demo because what i what i did was I spent a day jamming on a, I got a profit synthesizer, the new edition of them um, that is that are similar to the old ones. And I spent the day exploring it and I found a particular sound that led me on to sort of what was virtually a 16 minute jam. Um, and I just went through, which I really liked. And then I sort of edited that down a little bit to the bits that I really liked of that. And then I just went through with an acoustic guitar um, or was it piano? I can't remember and worked on the different parts um and inevitable and th and they just sort of as i was jumping from idea to idea they had time changes and i became very uh, um, attracted to to what i'd accidentally created so those there's three separate parts to the um night song that appears on the record there's actually about another six parts to that jam which which may emerge they may begin the next record who knows Oh, uh, but it was a very fertile, fertile half an hour um, spent learning how to play a new instrument. Hey, like, have you done that yet? Like, that's that would be an like I would love. I, I don't maybe it's not for the masses, but I know a lot of your hardcore fans. Like, if you said I'm coming out with a half an hour piece, we'd be like, yeah, let's do this. Well, I mean that, as I said, that piece, night song, it has it's it's a to be continued kind of thing because I have got some other nice pieces that followed it up, all deriving from the same profit. Um, it was a real wonky profit sound. You might hear it in there still. Um, it kind of is common to all three pieces. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I've got to, I'm going to explore that. Who knows? Yeah, it would be a, kind of fun to start the next record with a 15-minute continuation of that jam, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be really cool. Well, speaking of things that, you know, so the first thing we heard... Um, bit different than that but you know it's got its own textures and so right was the lead single oh hi oh, and yeah. yeah so this um i i'd love to hear the backstory on this because i know this has much bigger implications than just a guy with a guitar and a, and a demo uh because it, it ties into uh so they can foundation correct could you tell us about that yeah i i this song existed before that connection was made but um as a sort of a demo but it was um quite, quite vague and um i was looking for a, a, a lyrical thread on it and started talking to this woman who runs a, an organization called So They Can, I've been supporting for many years, um, uh, who have been helping uh, build and resource schools and other facilities in uh, Kenya and Tan Tanzania in, in quite remote areas and economically quite depressed areas. So where there weren't formally schools. Um, so, and it's been a really amazing success story um, with all the community, the local communities running these places um, and uh, other, you know, uh, this organization resourcing it. I've got to, I, I sent a film crew up there and I, she said, would you, would you write a song for, for these kids? And this song happened to present itself and I thought it'd be perfect. Um, and the words became influenced by, by that. I was really intent to make the song stand on its own um, legs without anybody knowing the backstory, but uh, it is created for and inspired by these kids. And there's a video that's about to emerge of these kids responding to the to the song, which is truly joyful and, and uh, inspiring in itself. So I look forward to you seeing that. Um, and the song has extra meaning and depth for me now, as does the release of the single. You know, I just I'm sort of feel like I'm working for um, for more than just our career. Yeah, and that's always I, I know that you know if you it always feels good to feel good. I think is what I was trying to say there. What was it about that like you know Tanzania, Kenya, and this foundation? Like why 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 that area? Why why was it that you were drawn there? Well, it came up because I was introduced to this woman um, by a friend here, and she's really done it the hard way. Very much backyard operation. It's not a big NGO. Um, and she was inspired by traveling through Africa um, in her twenties, and so it just has a really authentic feel about it, and it's small enough. You know, the world is such a it, there's overwhelming problems in the world that seem impossible to address um, for an individual. And what I've realized is that the best you can do is to find 
um, it, you know, community-based things that you can focus on and actually make a difference at, at a, you know, it, it may seem like on a small level, but I believe that uh, um, those kind of acts around the world actually count for something in the old, the old zeitgeist, really. Um, so, you know, and, and I think music has the same um, thing. You know, a song may seem humble, but it sometimes can affect incredibly positive change um, through just inspiring people to have good thoughts um so you know the the fact that the song is now connected to another uh very focused um cause which i think is you know gonna be these kids are amazing i've seen the video once you see the video they're very inspiring um it doesn't feel like you're you know following the traditional old um you know white savior narrative it feels like you're actually benefiting from these we're going to all benefit from these kids getting an education and that there's a huge potential in africa that's unrealized all of those things go into this, and I'm just really happy to be a small part of it. Yeah, but and even you know, even on the personal side, I know to to be a songwriter and to to find new ways to tell these stories, to you know, to, to find yeah. connections like that. I was even looking at some of the other songs, um, "Magic Piano," "All That I Can't Ever Own," and I was thinking about how even I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll reframe this into a question. But these lyrics, love is a gift I was given once, now I must keep it alive. And then when love is in my heart, it's all that I can ever own. You yeah. know, where you draw from, do you find, even on a topic as as big as love, the topic for songwriting, if there's one, right? Do you find that you're drawing from a separate place than you might have 20, 30 years ago? Uh, yeah, well, I'm actually more willing to be direct um and plain about it that uh, was always you know it, i was kind of fearful of exposing uh, myself by by making a plain statement like that before there was was sort of wrapped up in some kind of disclaimer um you know the people i admire that have written very directly i mean people like the beatles obviously were very plain about their um being prepared to write about love and it, it is truly as we all know the most significant um force in the world for good and um to sing about it in a simple fashion is you know a very desirable thing to get to and i feel like maybe i'm at the age now where hey i mean it i'm not just writing it like hey baby i love you let's let's go and have a good time it's not that kind of love i'm talking about it's a more universal um feeling yeah well even in directness i mean the the poetry is there the poetry is there you know you can't pass up, of course, you know, especially with a song like Magic Piano, and it's not the only place it comes up, but but the, you're talking about some some heavier topics right there. I began to sense my own weight walking up the gravity stairs. And then if I end up forgetting what I had to say, you will still hear my humming on the last day. And I thought, my God, that is the best lyric that I've heard in years. <laughs> that's it. But that's... Yeah, well, like, at music, it, it sort of ties in a little bit to the... I, the amazing effect that music has on people who who have lost, um, they don't even know their families anymore, but uh, a song will come on from their youth and they'll know every word of it. And um, yeah, music has this tremendous ability to transcend um, conscious thought. And yeah, I, I believe in it. Yeah. But it, I mean, it should also be said, I mean, you are carrying some heavy personal weight in those lyrics. Is uh, that well, something you saw it, coming? It's, 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 um, it, it, it's both a specific reference to a set of stairs that we we have all the whole family's commented on. We go to this place on holiday. Uh, these set of stairs are, are stone and they just are particularly hard to get up. And we believe there's some kind of iron deposit underneath the, the ground that's leading to the underworld um, and dragging us down. This may be a, as after a fairly long session at the Taverna down below. Um, but yeah, it, that's where the term came from. But it really obviously refers to the idea, you know, as, as time goes on, you get a little bit older, things get a little harder to, you know, there's a great compulsion in me as the magic piano refers to, to, to um, find, to find music and to be in music and um, to get that, to get that buzz and uh, create that energy. But it takes more, it takes more energy these days and you have to um, fight a little bit harder. So gravity stairs is a reference to that too. Yeah. Well, I also love that line words matter, but get in the way when you got a good story to tell, let the melody reign. Well, that, yeah. well, that's the melody. That's 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 it right there. That's what I hear first. Well, that's me as well. I always grew up with that. And I love, words obviously support 
that and then there's a moment of revelation occasionally where you go oh my god i just realized what he's singing about or you know a line pops into your head i love that process of a slow release because if music is too reliant on lyric to start with you feel you have to concentrate in a kind of academic way and that's really not what music is to me anyway and it's personal obviously but that's not what music is to me yeah was the um the big audio dynamite song rush where that breakdown comes in he says it's all about rhythm and melody rhythm and i was like yeah that's that's the two things it's down the road where i go oh those are the words that's yeah i mean the words have to behave in a melodic way right, right. <laughs> that that makes sense no i appreciate what you're doing when you're writing right. it, it is a family affair um you know you, you've mentioned uh you got you know your, your boys on here too do you find that uh that you get specific things co-writing with each one of them very much so yeah they've both accumulated a lot of experience and um in their in their time as writers and arrangers and they have perspectives on lyrics and we we often compare notes and i do it, hopefully do it for them as well sometimes uh just come in a, another songwriter can lean into a half an idea and identify for you what are the strong parts of it and um, give you a hint about what it might need um, yeah really valuable within a band you know if uh, I, I don't take that lightly and they um, yeah I think years ago it might not have worked because they might have been uh, intimidated coming into this environment as younger men but now they've got the confidence of their own uh, convictions a little chest nubbing if they need to yeah <laughs> uh and and did i see right like there's also a co-write on here with tim there is a song there is a, a writing credit with tim of a song that goes a long way back and was originally a different um song really but um some greater plan and we sing it together on the record as well it's always uh lovely to return to that dynamic we have a unique way of writing together um the tim has attributes that i don't have and vice versa so we step into a writing situation and um, yeah, he'll have a title often, which is really handy. So it's fantastic to arrive at a writing session with a title. That's yeah. you know the ultimate really. Takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, I do. I, I I think I've covered almost every bit of the record one way or the other here. I love it so much. They're I great. love what you guys do. I That's great. Do. Yeah. Thank Gravity you. Stairs is so good. Neil, it's great to catch up with you again. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. That's all right. Sorry. I was a little late. Never, never, you're never late as long as you get here. Time zones, <laughs> you know, that we'll never get used to them. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.